Welcome to Witch Weekly, your weekly installment of Harry Potter and all things Harry Potter related. I'm your host, Mel. And I'm Marissa. And today we are discussing something that is very, very close to my heart. Sirius Black. Mr. Black himself. He would be close to other things, but <laughs> he's oh. dead. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. We're just going to start declaring that anytime we talk about someone who's passed. Just R.I.P. <laughs> exactly. So, I have a question for you, Marissa. I, I figured you would. On a scale of 10 to 10, what would you rate Sirius? <laughs> You're not giving me much leeway, are you there? Nope. Leeway is not required. I know what your answer is. <laughs> well, since I don't have a choice, I'm going to have to go with 10, Mel. I, I was going to go 100. <laughs> he, he, hits, he hits 10 on the scale 10 times. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, do you ever feel like he might be my favorite character? I don't know. He might be. I just don't. Uh, it's possible, but <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think people get that from you. No, I mean, not I at do all. because we've been talking about Harry Potter for quite some time, but uh, I don't know if everybody else realizes that you're in love with him. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so but they will after this episode. <laughs> yes, anybody. If there was any doubts in anybody's mind, uh, I wonder actually. Just going through everything I like, and more characters that you'll meet through other mediums I like. I wonder if we'll start finding a pattern in the kind of guy I like. <laughs> He's you like the bad boys, don't you? <laughs> well, I like Aragorn. Is he a bad boy? Mm. He's badass, but I don't know if that makes yeah. him a bad boy. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. No, see, then in Torchwood, which I know you haven't seen, but there's a character called Yanto, and he's a good boy. He's a very good boy. If he was a dog, he would be the best boy. He is not a dog, though. And he's okay. still the best boy. <laughs> gotcha. So I don't know if there is a pattern. Hmm. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, sorry, Sirius. That's what everybody's here to hear about because I know that lots of people love Sirius just as much as I do. And if they don't love him, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there are only two options. No, loving this... him and loving him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> There's those who love him and those that are wrong. Mm -hmm. So I've just pulled up Wikia for Sirius, the Harry Potter Wikia, and the first thing I noticed was the family information, where, you know, they've got everybody they're related to. It's a long list, and that's okay. <laughs> well, uh, he is a pureblood, so there is going to be a lot of connections. Yeah, so, uh, that's fine. But what weirds me out is people have gone and worked this stuff out. So, they say, Orion Black, father slash second cousin once removed. Ew. While Burger Black, mother slash second cousin once removed. Ew. Regulus Black, brother slash third cousin. What? <laughs> what? Well, when, when you get in, it's like the whole, my, my, uh, y you are your own grandfather. My sister's my aunt. Yeah. Yeah. And you are your own grandfather. <laughs> go, go ahead. So I just wanted to point that out, but they did say that. Sirius says that they're all inbred, like there's no pure blood that's not related to another. Mm-hmm. And actually, one I thought you would find interesting, where was it? Do, 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 do. It's one of his aunts, I think. Where was it? Uh, knee Lestrange, no, that's Bellatrix. Knee Black, Knee Rosia. Uh, where was it? Black. You're very unprepared. No, no I found it earlier, and I was gonna. Ah, oh, here we go. Melania Black. Paternal grandmother, so grandmother on his father's side. Want to know what her maiden name was? Yes, I do. Macmillan. Stop it. <laughs> no! So that, oh, like. Ernie! <laughs> yeah, so Sirius and Ernie are somehow related. Oh, that makes me sad. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with being related to Sirius? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with him. It's, it's the rest of his family. It's the, <laughs> the rest of the others. Yes, yeah, so uh, Sirius, 
uh, awry in black, was born 3rd of November 1959, and he died in 18th of June 1996. Very sad. R.I.P. So he was raised amongst the pure blood family, the noble and most ancient house of black. And he was the heir to that family. Uh, unfortunately, he disagreed with his parents' views on blood purity. Well, and... unfortunately for his parents, not unfortunately for him. Oh, yes, yes, not for him, but unfortunately for them, yes. And he was sorted into Gryffindor instead of Slytherin. I've always wondered... I, Oh, no, never mind, it is answered. But he, obviously, by the time he got to Hogwarts, he was saying to James when they met on the train... That, that he wanted to be different and wanted to be in Gryffindor. I'm wondering what point did he sort of realise his family was wrong? Because that's at 11 years old, he's gone, my family is wrong and I'm going to be different. And how do you work out that your family's wrong and that you're going to be different when you're only 11 and probably really secluded? Maybe his parents were... Like, I've read a lot of things like that think that his parents were abusive and maybe he just wanted to be different from them because of the way that they were towards him i don't know i've read fan theories like that as well because then of course you get regulus who was the obedient son until the end when he swapped sides last minute right spoilers (laughs) uh So he obviously went to Hogwarts, uh, 1971 to 1978, and he made an awesome friendship with James Potter, Remus Lupin, and Peter Pettigrew, and uh, they were known as the Marauders, they joined the Order of the Phoenix, they fought against Voldemort together, he was named godfather to James' son, who is Harry Potter, wonder who that kid is. Never heard of him before. No. Uh, unfortunately, their f- so-called friend, Peter Pettigrew, betrayed the Potters and sold them out to the Dark Lord Voldemort, and Sirius was blamed and sent to Azkaban after he allegedly killed Peter Pettigrew. Fake news. <laughs> oh, God. I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Sirius escaped from Azkaban 12 years later uh, to exact revenge. He got to meet Harry, and unfortunately Peter got away again, which would lead to other bad things, and Sirius had to go live on the lamb. Uh, And then, I don't want to talk about the rest. Can you talk about the rest? It gets sad. Uh. No, you gotta do it. (laughs) So... He returns to his childhood home, and it becomes the headquarters for Order of the Phoenix. Good bunch of guys and gals. Uh, He gives Harry some questionable advice. And then when Harry goes to rescue him from the Ministry of Magic, where he is not, Sirius does go to the Ministry of Magic, where he dies, killed essentially by his cousin. He falls into the veil. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the summary of his life. It's very sad. Can we talk about happy things now? Like, he was a marauder. He was a marauder. He was Padfoot. Yes, he earned his name because he was a dog in his animagus form. Yes. I just think... It's adorable. uh, Well, that's the thing. We, We briefly touched on Wolfstar recently, you and I. I am on board with it. I really am. Mm -hmm. Because yes, I just I... imagine he's 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 Remus's pack mate. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm totally for it. But uh, I I just yeah he's his pack mate. That's all I can think. They're like mm, the wolf and the dog <laughs> playing together. Mm. I don't like how the wolf looks in the movies. Mm-hmm. I do not agree. Like it's not bad, but in the description you very much get the idea that in the books that he looks like a normal wolf, just bigger. Yeah. And so I imagine that, you know, they would just look like a big, big ass wolf and a big ass dog running around Hogwarts together with a, uh, stag. No one would have noticed Peter. He was too small. Yeah. So 
I just want to briefly touch on the amount of love and friendship that would have been involved in becoming an Amagi for someone. Mm-hmm. I just think it's so beautiful that they, instead of rejecting Lupin, they decide to find a way that they could be with him all the time so that yes. he won't have to go through all this alone. Friendship is real. Friendship is magic. It is. It's true. Uh, So the Marauders were somewhat of troublemakers. We hear stories, especially Jack. I know, shocking that Sirius was a troublemaker. (laughs) Uh, We hear stories about them, mostly James and Sirius, getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. Uh, In the sixth book, Harry has to sort out all these old detention cards. And he reads about how Sirius and James used illegal jinxes on people and they're always at detention together and often accompanied by Remus and Peter. Yes. So I can just imagine how troublesome they would have been. And I'd also like to think, like, I know they say that James matured. I wonder what happened, like, what kind of growing occurred for Lily Evans to think he was worthy. And then comes the question, was Sirius maturing as well? Because he obviously got an arrested development when he went to prison. But you'd think if James was maturing, Sirius would have had to mature as well, or else James would have had to pick between him and Lily. Well, maturing how much, though? Because he they, they were only, you know, 17, 18 when they left Hogwarts. Yeah. So you can, you can mature from 15, which we saw in the Pensieve, to... Hmm. 17, but it's not necessarily going to mean you're acting like an adult. Yeah, it, that's what I'm wondering. Probably they were just being more sensible. Uh, James obviously managed to get himself head boyship, so he was mm-hmm. obviously in some way showing signs of maturity and leadership and not just... I'd say he would have, he would have had to stop picking on kids in the sixth year. Right. And... I'd like to think that Sirius followed his footsteps. Begrudgingly. Or he, a, or he caused less mischief than he was causing well, he, before. He, he wouldn't have had his partner in crime. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure how much, once he got together with Lily, how much she commandeered most of his time. But he was kind of obsessed with her, so. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I love Sirius's line in Snape's flashback where James can't work out why Lily doesn't like him in Sirius because I think she sa- is saying you're conceited. <laughs> See, she seems to think you're a bit conceited, mate. <laughs> oh, love Sirius. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I always just wonder, though, like, so much about his home life. You don't hear that much other than he fought with his parents. He didn't agree with them. But he stayed there until he was 16, Mm-hmm. Until he just couldn't take it anymore. Until he couldn't take it. So I just want to know what he... We know he was being rebellious and sticking up posters in his bedroom of uh, muggle women. Yes. Which I think is just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. What do you think was the final straw? I wrote a fan fiction about this once, but I didn't finish it. I think... That by this point, uh, you know, we'll be in, what, 75, 76? About then. Mm -hmm. He's home for the summer. And, you know, Regulus is lapping up all this Death Eater stuff. And they're going, no, you're too young, you're too young. I would like to think it was family Christmas. And Lucius Malfoy was there because he was going to marry Narcissa. Bellatrix and her hubby were there. And they were trying to recruit Sirius, essentially, saying, you know, do the right thing. Join us Mm -hmm. and bring your family honour. And Sirius was like, no, not happening. (laughs) And a huge fight breaks out kind of thing, and Sirius just leaves. He's done. All right. I can uh, see that. So Sirius is a traditional name for the Black family. It's been used at least three times in their family tree. And within the, his generation, like, around his generation, we see 
loads of children named after stars and galaxies. So we have uh, Andromeda, Narcissa, Arcturus, Regulus, um, Draco even. Mm-hmm. The dragon. The dragon. Um, and I actually really like that they're all named after stars and constellations. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. So, obviously his family was elitist, uh, a tradition that he didn't follow. Uh, and one of the things he did in Rebellion was putting a permanent sticking charm on the Gryffindor banner in his bedroom, alongside the pictures of muggle, muggle girls and motorcycles. And the um, picture of him in the Marauders. Of course. Um, so we see that, like, his cousins, well, two of them, Narcissa and Bellatrix, did the right thing. They married p- properly. Um, right. While Andromeda, who Sirius, I believe, calls his favourite cousin, uh, mm. was a blood trader because she married a muggle-born. How dare she? Mm. I, I wonder how much influence Andromeda had over him. Maybe that's, like, some of where his hatred for his family came from was... Maybe. His contact with her where she was going, you know, I don't believe this, and his family's like, rah, 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 rah. But, uh... Yes, yeah, so he's uh, cousins with Nymphadora, once removed. Yes. And Nymphadora is the best. Yes. I love how they uh, speculate in Half-Blood Prince that Nymphadora must have been in love with Sirius. Like, they're so blind to what's going on. Well, it's Harry, again. Mm. Um, He doesn't notice much. Yeah. All the Weasleys, for that matter, they all thought, all the kids thought that they were trying to hook Tonks up with Bill, and Tonks was upset because Sirius had died. Well, uh, well, the, the Weasleys just didn't want Floor to marry Bill for whatever reason. No, but, yeah, and that's, so they thought that they were trying to hook up Tonks with Bill. Yeah, no. Which is not what they were trying to do. Nope, not at all. But anyway, we're off the topic of Sirius. Sorry. <laughs> um, at school, he was a troublemaker. They, him along with his friends, made the Marauder's Map which is awesome magic and a bit of a uh, Deus Ex Machina in some situations. Yeah. Actually, sometimes. Rowling has said one of her big regrets was not to leave the Marauder's Map in Moody's office at the end of the fourth book because she never said that Harry got it. Yeah, it never... Yeah, it never really came, came up. Mm. But he just, like, took it or it got returned to him somehow or whatever. Uh, at school, James and Sirius were very popular. Uh, that uh, Sirius was respected for his intelligence, but not his behaviour. And it is said that all the girls found him quite handsome. Ooh. But because uh, he was a rebel, he ignored them. Which made girls fawn over his bad boy attitude. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that would work on me. Like, I'd probably be like, oh, he's cute, but he's ignoring me, so F you too, buddy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd be the same way. They forget you. I don't... I'm I'm a strong, independent woman. They don't need no man. Mm. Uh, They also... So as well as the Marauder's Map and being an Magi, they had uh, James's invisibility cloak. So Mm -hmm. they got around... uh, Hogwarts quite easily, and are the forerunners for the Weasley twins. Yeah. In my opinion. The Weasley twins learned so much from them. Well, they... They even said that they owe a lot to Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs when they give the map over to Harry in book three. Yes. We owe them so much, I think is exactly the quote. Yes, and they do. Uh, so Sirius inherited a hatred for Snape from James, and... Inherited, though? Is that really the right word? Totally. James hated Snape, so Sirius joined in, and he held the grudge forever on James's behalf, in my opinion. Okay. Because, <laughs> like, he bullied him as well. He was quite, you know, 
mean, but James, I think James saw uh, Severus as an enemy because he was in the way of him getting Lily. Yeah, competition. He was competition. Even though, they, to be fair, their first meeting didn't go well either on the train. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, Sirius has some very problematic behaviour, especially in his teen years, where he and James bullied Snape because he was bored. He tells James, I'm bored, so James finds a way to entertain him. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's a problem. He, um would later reflect that they were only 15 and arrogant little burks. Not that Harry accepts that as an excuse. No, I wouldn't yeah. either. But like, no, you guys were straight up jerks and torturing this guy. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. And that's problematic behavior as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, and another problematic behavior, and it becomes really debated about who was involved in what ways. So Snape almost killed... Sorry, Sirius almost killed Snape. Uh, Yes. He told him where to find Lupin when Lupin was transforming. Mm -hmm. I think it was a harebrained move. I honestly don't think he intended for Snape to die. Right. But he obviously didn't think it out properly. And I strongly believe that James had nothing to do with it. And James was the good guy in that situation. I agree. Yeah, because a lot of people say, you know, Sirius did to kill him, and I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know if he actually wanted to kill Snape. He's He doesn't strike me as that kind of evil. Like, I think mm-hmm. he just wanted to scare the hell out of him and was, you know, thinking that either Snape would wuss out or if he didn't, he wouldn't get close enough for anything to happen. Yeah, and I never really understood that in the first place. Like... Yeah, you follow Lupin into the Shrieking Shack, but were you doing it? Like, because it, I'm sorry, it just, the whole story doesn't make a lot of sense. Because it says that, you know, James followed Snape and pulled him out of the way before anything could happen, but he caught a glimpse of Lupin, but wouldn't he have just caught a glimpse of a werewolf, but like put two and two together? It. The story has a lot of holes that I would yeah. rather have the whole story than just the bits and pieces that we hear about. Definitely. But um, in my head, canon, because <laughs> they say Snape had been bugging them, so Sirius just told him where to find Lupin. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what he did. He did, And that's the other thing. He, it wasn't as if he took him there. It wasn't as if he made him go there. Snape made his own decision. Sirius mm-hmm. went saying along the lines of, you want to know where he goes, go there. And Mm -hmm. Snape made his own decision to go. Sirius just omitted vital information. Which he had no... Yeah, yeah, he had no right to tell him anyway. He had no right to tell him anyway. He had no right to do any of it. However, Snape made his own decision. And, come on, you trust Sirius who bullies you. You're going to do what Sirius tells you. Kind of silly. I wouldn't. Not if I wasn't getting along with him, I wouldn't. No. Right. If I'm his enemy, I'm not going to listen to what he says. No, he... But, uh, either way, horrible thing. Horrible thing that he did. However, I'm not all for going, he, he's an attempted murderer. I don't think that was his intention. Attempted mm-hmm. manslaughterer, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't... Sense. Yeah, it wasn't his intention. And I think... I like to think he felt bad about it when he sort of stopped to think. Let the teenage hormones clear and went, I could have killed somebody... I could have hurt my best friend, being Lupin. I put James in danger because James had to go rescue him. I'm sure he was able to rationalise. Even if later he says it serves Snape right, he's talking after 12 years of Azkaban. I don't think we can take anything that he says at that point in Prisoner of Azkaban as serious. (laughs) Seriously serious. Hmm. Um, Uh So... Some time. That's the other thing, because the timelines aren't clear. They never say whether he played the prank on Snape before or after he ran away from the Potters. I'd say it's before. I'd say it's also because of stress from his home life. Like, yeah. he would never have done I that could, if he was living with the Potters. I could buy that. So, yeah, but at 16, he finally ran away and uh, was adopted by the Potters. 
uh, this caused his name to be taken out of the family tree. But uh, his uncle left him a lot of money, which allowed him to go and get his own place when he was 17. Yeah. But I, I just love the idea of the Potters had always welcomed him and they took him in and then after he got his own place, he was always welcome for Sunday lunch. Mm-hmm. I just think it's so cute. Just imagine this f- loving family. And I was like, probably the only family Sirius really ever felt he had was them. Yeah, them and, uh, you know, Lupin and... Oh, yeah, obviously, but I meant, like, apart from, like, people his own age, like, a family dynamic, he would have found in the Potters. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they graduate school. I love... Have you read the short story that uh, Rowling wrote about James and Sirius? It's told from the perspective of, of a policeman chasing down these two hoons on a motorcycle. I feel like I have, but I don't remember it. So, yeah, around 1977, they were being chased by Death Eaters and they were on Sirius's motorcycle and they managed to get... They got in a police chase at the same time. They managed... They got cornered. The Death Eaters, like, hit a wall or something and then Sirius rode the motorbike off into the sky. Sounds so, legit. Yeah. Sorry, Sirius and James used their wands to raise the police cars, uh, causing the Death Eaters who were on brooms to crash into them. Nice. Yeah. Um, so Sirius's father uh, would have died around 1979, and that would have been about the same time Regulus died, though they don't actually know what happened to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Sirius would die never knowing what happened to his brother. Yes, died never knowing that his brother wasn't a douche. Mm. Wasn't a total douche, anyway. Um, he attended James and Lily's wedding. They had Harry. But during this time, there was so much stress and distrust going around. Anybody could have been a spy for Voldemort. And uh, Sirius stopped trusting Lupin. And if you look at the picture they use in the Harry Potter movie, uh, Order of the Phoenix, of the Order of the Phoenix, you'll notice that Lupin is standing away from James, Lily, and Peter. Yeah. He's in it, yeah. Uh, So Sirius made a very bad error in judgment. He was made secret keeper, was meant to be made secret keeper for the Potters. But at the last minute, they swapped it to Peter Pettigrew because Sirius said everyone will know it was him, so they'll come after him while no one would suspect a coward like Peter. Still never made sense to me. Bad life choices, Sirius. Mm-hmm. Like, I know it's easy to say in hindsight that it shouldn't have happened, but you knew that you would never sell them out. You don't know what mm. Peter's up to, and... So what if they would come after you? You said you'd never betray them, and that's well, how it would be. Yeah, I suppose he thought they'll come after me, and I can't tell, so it's completely 100% foolproof. And, you know, no one's going to suspect Peter, so he'll be safe. Mm-hmm. But, um, unfortunately, 1981, Halloween night, Sirius went to check on Peter, and he was gone. Mm-hmm. There no wasn't signs a struggle, of struggle, so he knew he knew something was up. Yes, so he went to Godric's Hollow to find the house destroyed. His friends were dead, but Harry was still alive. So mm-hmm. he was unfortunately made to. I think if he was allowed to keep Harry, he would have got done better. He wouldn't have gone after Peter. He would have. I agree. He would have thought clearly, cleared his own name, explained calmly what had happened. <laughs> but no, no, he's not allowed to have Harry, so he gives Hagrid his motorbike, and because uh, Dumbledore is going to send Harry to the Dursleys, nice plan. Yep, that worked out. Yeah, so Hagrid uh, goes off to find um, Pettigrew, mm-hmm. and Pettigrew showed his cunning, Slytherin. And outwitted mm-hmm. Sirius, and in a city street, they confronted one another. Um, and, yeah, Peter pulled off the Great Disappearing Act. He 
killed a bunch of muggles and disappeared after cutting off his finger uh, and just left Sirius standing there. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a few theories about why Sirius was laughing. There mm-hmm. is trauma. He's in so much shock. He realises he's been tricked and he's just lost it temporarily. Yeah. But um, there's another one suggesting that Sirius was laughing because he thought Peter has, had accidentally killed himself and he thought that was just too perfect. I like to think it was trauma. I like to think that too. Yeah. Uh, so Sirius was arrested and without a trial was sent to Azkaban as a ma- mass murderer. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Yeah, it's great. I have a lot of questions about the justice system, but we'll discuss that at a later date. Mm. Um, and yes, yeah, Sirius spends his days in confinement all on his own. Very sad. And, um, however, obsession saves him because he knows that Peter's alive. And, well, no, sorry, obsession that he's innocent. And then he mm-hmm. finds out Peter is alive, and that gives him the motive to break out. So he stayed in Azkaban, knowing he was innocent for 12 years, when he could have broken out. I think there was a lot of guilt. I think he was punishing himself, because he yeah. felt like he was responsible for James and Lily's death. I agree. Okay. Um, but he, he stayed sane, and sane-ish. Um... Which I think is really interesting that if you can hold on to truth, it doesn't have to be happy, but if it's truth, you can stay sane. The death eat, the, the mentors can't take everything from you if you have a truth you can cling to. Yeah, because truth doesn't necessarily mean that everything gets resolved. It's just you have mm-hmm. that fact to yeah. clear everything else out that you might be thinking about exactly oh that's a really nice photo i love gary oldman (laughs) yes i'm a fan too he's a chameleon so yeah after this point we get on to the books and i'm sure everybody knows the story of what happens to sirius through the books let's talk about gary oldman for a moment what do you think of his performance as sirius because i have i hear a lot of complaints that he was too old Well, the thing is, while I have heard that and I understand it, I think that Azkaban was supposed to age him more than he normally would have. Yeah, that's one of the things I think. So his age did not bother me. I thought he was a fantastic Sirius. Me too. I think he played the role really well. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, when you've got actors, so you've got the trio and all of them, they're aging very quickly and looking older and older. So you need mm-hmm. to contrast the adults with them because obviously if you have a bunch of people who are getting into their early 20s and then you have people who are meant to be in their early 30s, it's they're going to look similar ages. Well, if yeah. you have you get the 30-year-olds played by a 40-year-old, it contrasts the age better on screen yeah. and makes the teenagers look like teenagers. Which you're supposed to. <laughs> yes. Funny that. <laughs> but no, I really enjoy his performance in in the movies as serious. Did and he read he... the books, do we know? Sorry? Did he read the books, do we know? I don't know. Let's find out. I think he did. Like, just personally, I'd be surprised if he didn't to get, like, his character. Yeah, did I think Gary... so, too. He's, oh. he's the kind of actor that would read all the source material in order to yeah. find out well um, yeah, yeah because i think they talked about or maybe that was just because i think that they interviewed the actor that played remus i don't know his name i feel so terrible oh uh, i do know his name he was in wonder woman <laughs> but they talked to him and uh he said that gary had come up to him was talking I don't know if about the script or what, and he goes, 
Have Thulis, you, David have you Thulis. Read David. He said, Gary was talking about it and he seemed really happy and I was like, have you read the whole thing? And he says, well, I skimmed it. And then he came in a couple days later and was like, you know who they're killing off? <laughs> 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 so, it it calls into question whether or not he read the books. <laughs> yeah. Which is surprising because he's such a great method actor. Like, he's doing, Win- he just performed as Winston Churchill and all I can hear is good things. I heard great things yeah. about his portrayal of Dracula. Yeah, and I liked him as Commissioner Gordon. Yes. <laughs> Yes, he's a great actor. And the thing, he's one of those actors where I never recognize him. Like He looks so different all the time. He looks so films. different all the time. Exactly. Yeah, um, he's, like you said, a chameleon. And it's like, there are some actors that you know it's them. Mm. Just by the way they act. They act the same in all the movies. But he is very much... Nicholas Cage. Into the... <laughs> Girl, you don't even know how much you're in my mind right now. <laughs> that is what... exactly who I was thinking of. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed Gary Oldman's performance, and sort of going into the fan topic I've picked, because I love this movie, Severus Snape and the Marauders, it's a short film, everyone should check it out, we had the director, Justin Zagri, on Witch Weekly last year, that you can find the episode, yeah, Mm -hmm. Kevin Allen, he's a YouTube guy, but he does an amazing series, and when they were all talking, they said, you know how do you want to play Sirius? And he says, I want to play him like Gary Oldman did. And they came back and said, yeah, but Gary Oldman's playing Sirius after Azkaban. This is pre-Azkaban. And he's like, okay, mm-hmm. I will play him as Gary Oldman would have played him if he had a beat to Azkaban. <laughs> All right. But he, he just plays it so well. He's just straight onto it. Very happy-go-lucky Sirius. He's got this beautiful fighting style. Mm-hmm. Right at James's side at all times. Ready to team up. Yep. So, yeah, That's I want to give kudos to Kevin Allen. Uh, I hear he is a professional pirate. I have it on good authority. Ooh. And I'm okay with that. I know. I was just like, done. <laughs> <laughs> Mel is all about it. <laughs> Put him on my list of actors to track down if I come to the USA. We could do it. Find it. Find Road trip. In- Yes, we can. Pop- we can road trip it when you come here. Probably in California. Uh, well, it's quite a bit away, but we can do it anyway. <laughs> road trip. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to give him a shout out. I find it actually really hard to talk about exactly why I love Sirius. It's really weird. Other characters, if you ask me, like, another character I love, I can say it's these reasons. But I just love mm-hmm. him so much, I don't even know why. That's disappointing. I wanted like chapter and verse, a whole thesis about why you, uh, why you, you are talk in love to with Jess. Him. She is writing a thesis on Voldemort. <laughs> All right. Uh, see, he's just one of those. Ca- I just, I don't know. There's so much about him. Like, I suppose there's like the bad boy side because I do like bad boys on TV, and movies and books. Okay. But there's also he's so caring and loyal to the Marauders and in turn to Harry. And while he's not a good parent, he tries. Yeah, definitely. He tries so hard. He he wants what's best for Harry. Yeah, he also was stunted in his emotional development into an adult. Because of everything that happened. So I I understand why he's kind of lacking in that territory. And I think that's... He's not a perfect character. I think that's what makes me love him more. I hate the perfect characters. Like, they need to be flawed. Mm -hmm. Clumsiness is not a flaw, all you young adult authors. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, he's flawed. He has a lot of problematic behavior and issues. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes him a well-rounded character. And that's probably why I love him. He's well thought out, well-rounded. Agreed. Agreed. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> so tell me, why do you love Sirius Black and why is he the best character ever? <laughs> I, I never said any of that. <laughs> yes, you did. I, I do. <laughs> okay, put words in my mouth, why don't you? Um, I like Sirius. Um, there are some things that, that bother me, obviously. Um, how he 
he does kind of use Harry as a replacement for James, but I yeah. understand there's that whole, you know, stunted emotional development and all that kind of stuff. I, I do like him as a character cause he, he is complicated. He has a lot of, a lot of, uh, issues from his childhood that kind of follow him throughout his life. And then it's exacerbated by his stint in Azkaban, but he did try to do the best he could with the situation that he was given. He did kind of was like, Dumbledore, I hate that you're making me stay inside the house all the time. But he did try to do what was best for Harry and exactly. for the Exactly, he order. agreed to do it for Harry. Because mm-hmm. Harry needed him. But then he found out that Harry was at the ministry, and he's like, I'm not going to let this kid get himself killed. I'm going to go help. No, of course not. He's got to protect him. And... That didn't work out so well. No. Um, no, no, not at all. And that's so sad. It's like, you know, I agree with his decision, but it's like if you just sat tight, Harry would have had you to come home to. Exactly. But they needed him out of the way for story reasons. They totally did. Just like they yeah. need to get rid of Dumbledore eventually. He needs all of his father figures to be gone at some point. Yep. Which is sad. Because... I mean, uh, I know that uh, J.K. had contemplated killing off Arthur Weasley instead of Sirius. If yes, if Arthur had died, Sirius could have lived. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, but I think it was sad. more important for him to lose Sirius than it would have been for him to lose Mr. Weasley. Definitely, because um, while Mr. Weasley cared for him, he never really took like a fatherly role. No, no. Everyone says, oh, Arthur was a father figure. I'm like, not really. And no, if anything, yeah. Harry had to be the adult. <laughs> Teach him how to use Pretty money. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Navigating through Muggle World. Muggle World, that sounds like a theme park. <laughs> so. Yeah, let's make it a thing. <laughs> let's make it a thing. Muggle World. Should we uh, play some random ships to lighten the mood? I'd love to. So my stipulation is these characters had to have appeared during the Marauders era. So that means people like McGonagall and Hagrid were around, but obviously no one like from Harry's generation of schoolgoers. Okay, and just so everyone knows, random ships is where we both pick a character, we put them into a ship, set it to sail on the lake at Hogwarts and see if it sails or gets shot down by a cannon, basically. Yes, the cannon. <laughs> as JK wrote it exactly <laughs> I've got a character, do you have a character? let's see here let's see um man there are so, like, there are some that you automatically think of and then I want to, like, not think of the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the ones piece. you're automatically going to pick so i think i think i got it ready three mm-hmm. two one series marlene Black. mckinnon didn't he have a thing for marlene is that canon no i don't think I don't, it was i don't think so but i have read fan fiction where they were a thing but you go. got this one you do you do you boo i i do <laughs> so i can totally see this they went to school together and, um, you know, they just dated casually. And then he was quite happy with Marlene. Things went to hell. He went to Azkaban. Marlene, of course, thought he was guilty because everyone did. But, you know, down the road, she totally survives. She wasn't killed by Death Eaters. Just saying for this to work, she survives. <laughs> she joins the... She's part of the Order of the Phoenix. And... Um, you know, they get reunited and live happily ever after and have many babies. <laughs> just saying. I, I approve. I'm just saying that ship should sail. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just quickly threw them into archive of our own, and the first thing to come up is a story called To Build a Home. The last chapter was published on the 2nd of February, so yesterday. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And the summary says, Why did I even marry you, McKinnon? He shook his head, an amused undertone in his voice. You claim you love me, she shrugged back, her eyes already averted to the food being prepared. Having second thoughts? 
Not really loving or feeling loved in the past 10 minutes, he answered back. No happy birthday wishes so far, but a ton of death threats. Sirius Black never thought he would live up to the expectations of becoming a married man with a family to take care of, but the first Wizarding War made him pay too much for that. Now, 19 years later, single father of twins and just coming back to a normal Whoa. life after the death of Voldemort, he realised that he hasn't gone, he wasn't over his past. Thanks. There you go. So, um, pairings are Sirius Black and Marley McKinnon and James Potter and Lily Evans Potter. Yeah, there is the, I looked up in fanfiction.net, and the first one that comes up is called Relectless, Reckless Abandon. Um, and the blurb is just, but they always picked each other up, rose like twin phoenixes from dying embers, because although they were a boy with a charming smile and a girl with a disarming laugh, together, together they were golden. Um, they loved and died with furious, reckless abandon. That kind of sounds cute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've got a what if. Okay. What if Sirius got to raise Harry? That kid would have gotten in so much more trouble. (laughs) I I don't know. I think Sirius would have matured and been a good parent, and he would have had Remus to help him. Lupin would be like, I don't think you should do that, Sirius. You really shouldn't do that. They would be the... They would be the... Harry's two dads. <laughs> Harry's dads, yes. <laughs> I can yeah, just imagine. I, I would like to think that he would have matured and been a good dad, but he would have been the cool dad. Oh, yeah, and he would want to be the cool dad. He would just oh, be totally. like, called to, the, called to school because, like, Harry's been fighting. It's just like, he hit another kid. Good on you. I mean, bad behavior, Harry. Don't do that again. High yeah, five. High five. Low five. Low five the teachers can't see. Low five so Remus doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remus would be like, we're very disappointed in you, Harry. And then behind uh, Remus' back, Sirius is just giving the thumbs up. <laughs> I can so totally see that. I'm sure this that. is a fan fiction somewhere. Oh, I have no doubt what ever that there is fan fiction. In fact, I know there is fan fiction of Harry being raised by Lupin and Sirius. I know that there is a uh, fan fiction that I was reading that was about um, Sirius going and st- like basically stealing Harry away from the Dursleys when he was like four years old and mm-hmm. him and um, Remus? him and Remus get to <laughs> yeah, sorry him and Rios get to raise him and it's it's super cute and it's lots of lots of fluff and it, I like it a lot. I can just see Harry getting to ride around on Padfoot. Yes! <laughs> Little Harry holding onto his collar and Sirius would just happily just plod around. Oh yeah. <laughs> It'd be great. It'd be great fun. That would also they wouldn't be very... have to get a dog. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I also think it would be very awkward kind of like <laughs> your pet's also your pseudo-dad. Yeah, like them, them all patting. Yeah, like in Goblet of Fire, they all pat Sirius goodbye after they see him in Hogsmeade. Yeah, that's awkward. (laughs) And yeah, I love him at the train station though when he goes to in uh, Order of the Phoenix, takes Harry to the train station. Mm. Yeah, and he puts his uh, hands on Harry's shoulders or whatever. Yeah, he he gets up on his hand legs and puts his paws on and looks Harry in the eye. Communicating like, like so much soul. <laughs> I see dogs do that all the time. Especially big dogs. I am tiny. Well, yes. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Struggle's real. But, oh, it'd be so cute. Harry would have grown up in such a loving environment with those two. But Can you just alas, imagine? I can't I want this what if to be real. It's be sad. Well, it's, it's not. You can write as much fan fiction as you want, though. Oh, that takes effort. <laughs> All right, then. I'll read everybody else's fan fiction. Everybody else write about Remus and Sirius raising Harry. And send it to us. Send it to us. Always send it to us. Speaking of sending things to us, we can be reached on our email, whichweeklypodcast at gmail.com, or the network email, which is mmpodcastnetwork at gmail.com. Uh, we are on Twitter, which... Which Weekly Cast. We are on 
Facebook Witch Weekly podcast. Uh, our website is now mmpodcastnetwork.com, so you can hit us up at any of those places. And if you want to find me personally, I'm on Twitter at mabickett. Marissa, where can people find you? You can tweet me at rissaroo312. Awesome. So hit us up, talk to us about anything Harry Potter related. We love it so much. And we'll catch you all next week. See ya.